What's up guys? I'm uh, wearing some armor today because bullets are flying. Shots fired against air power. Today, Apple has killed the notorious air power that has been in release for the last 18 months. And it's a very sad day, honestly, guys, but air power is officially dead. And no, this is not an April Fool's from what we understand. And yes, for everyone asking, it's true. This is real body armor. This is like legit real body armor, class 3A. So it's really hot. Um, otherwise, okay guys, let's get started. So what a day. This was a very unexpected news day. We've also got some exclusive iPhone 11 stuff. The, the actual design, the chassis has leaked. The schematics for the device, and this is very unusual. It hasn't happened in a very long time. So a lot of exciting things to talk about. Anyways, let's start with air power. So yes, it is true. Air power is unofficially dead. Even Max Weinbach confirmed it. He said all of the employees internally have been relocated to other projects and it's just not Apple's year. I mean, AirPods 2, crazy long delay on those. Air power completely dead. So let's take a minute to remember this guy and what it could have been. You know, originally when Apple released this, there was nothing like it on the market. There still isn't. I mean, there's, I think there's one charger with overlapping coils. And even that, I don't, I, we don't know much about it yet. So we'll see what happens going forward if this technology will be implemented at all. I'm just, I'm personally a little upset and I'm, I'm sure all of you guys are. We waited this long and for Apple to pull one under us and just say, hey, it's shut down, nothing. You know, we're not even gonna try to make a wireless charger. We're just not gonna release this one at all or anything uh, for you. So sad days, honestly, sad days. So let's take a moment to remember this in a good light at least. Air power doesn't feel so good. And I think it belongs in the corner with the rest of Apple's thermal management failures. It's missing the 2018 MacBook Pro in there as well amongst other products. Also the time that developer Rambo managed to get the air power animation running on an old iPhone 5S. Good times, good times. So what exactly went wrong with this product? From what we heard before, there were thermal management issues. Not only that, but also connecting the software to the charging. They were having software issues as well because this pad actually had a very powerful processor in it to handle it. It was supposed to get software updates over time and to see Apple just abandon it, that's nuts. They haven't done something like this. Even the iPhone 4, which they were having the craziest delays producing it in white, they still released it even all that time later for them to just cancel something and not even try all the way is very strange. And I hope this doesn't mean anything. I hope this isn't a precursor for the future where they're gonna be doing this to many more products. That would suck. Even Mark Gurman commented on this saying it's quite an embarrassment for Apple, especially when they're shipping the AirPods 2 case with the wireless charging pad on the back. There are references to air power going back months in many different things. So for Apple to cancel it out of the blue like this is, is very ridiculous. Last thing I wanted to mention regarding that is Mark Gurman pointing out that air power wasn't possible with current technology standards. What they had at the time was not possible and even 18 months later, it was still not possible with all that research and development. Goes to show you, even though you may have an incredibly good product, you know, the laws of physics don't change. Sometimes it's just a very hard thing to do regardless. Until some crazy big breakthrough in technology might happen, we will not see something like this, I think, for a while. Okay, guys, sorry. One, one more thing regarding air power. So what happens now to the software side of air power? That was such a beautiful concept Apple created and a commenter to developer Rambo made a point here. What should happen to that? Should Apple release that with a Qi wireless charger, maybe partner with Belkin like they have before, make it a more upscale wireless charging experience, but not have this crazy technological side to it? Just a thought, but I don't think all of this should go to waste. Apple should do something nice with it. Okay, and we've got some juicy new iPhone 11 leaks. So this is coming from a very strange place, but a Twitter leaker that's been leaking Apple prototypes for the longest time, most recently the iPad mini 5, which turned out to be completely accurate to the Apple Watch Series 4 display before that was released amongst many others. If you actually scroll through his page, there are so many releases and prototypes. This guy knows what he's talking about. I definitely trust this source. And what he's published is the schematic slash actual housing chassis of the new iPhone. He calls it the new iPhone XR, but people were quick to pick up on it and see that it actually lines up exactly with earlier rumors we've seen from OnLeaks. If you take that chassis design and line it up with their leaked image, the camera lenses, everything, the placement is completely true. It lined up completely. Also, the camera design is not this symmetric one. It's asymmetric, so everything's all over the place and it's the slightly larger lens design from before. So this gets even more confusing, but this is most likely where Apple is gonna go forward 
effort in. And this is coming from a trusted source. Most recently, we had the schematic from the iPad Pro, which turned out to be completely true. So this thing has several things going for it regarding being actually true. If it is, let's, let's talk about the ramifications of that. You're gonna have a massive, even bigger than this camera lens on the back of your iPhone. Look at the comparison there. So this one is already double the size of the 10S lens. That one is going to be even larger. And this all ties in, I actually wanted to throw this in here from Max Weinbach, is he sent me a report talking about the third lens on the iPhone 11. Again, this is another leak you have not heard anywhere before. He says that Apple is actually testing development units right now with an ultra wide lens camera. So this is exactly the same from the Galaxy S10, the ultra wide lens. It gives you a crazy field of view. That was my favorite feature regarding the S10. And Apple is seeing how popular it is with Huawei, with Samsung. So they're testing that in prototype models models of the iPhone 11, but he says it's very unlikely to make it to market. That was supposed to be their 3D sensing camera and they'd have to replace it with an ultra wide if they wanted to do that. They can't have both apparently. So they're probably not gonna do that, but he says there's a slim chance ultra wide could make it to the final product. And honestly, I would prefer that over 3D sensing. But then again, what am I saying? Maybe that 3D sensing camera is better than ultra wide in every other way, we'll see. But I just thought that was interesting. And another detail in there is if they were to go with that ultra wide lens, Max Weinbeck is saying that sensor size would likely be between 16 to 18 megapixels, meaning the megapixel count will finally go up. It's been years since it has, and pictures will be sharper now, especially now that the sensor capabilities have caught up. They can raise the megapixel counts and not have much detrimental effect to the low light performance. And that's usually what happens. The higher the megapixel counts, the lower the low light performance, just because the pixel sizes themselves are getting smaller and you want larger pixels. That's why, again, megapixel count is not everything. But yeah, we could be seeing some major camera changes and ultra wide slim chance of that happening. We'll see. Also something I wanted to point out is with that leak, the actual chassis design of the iPhone is confirmed basically not to change. We heard earlier that Apple would be switching to a three year iPhone cycle. For example, the iPhone 6, 6S and iPhone 7 were all basically the same design with very minimal changes. If you really look at it from a physical standpoint, the iPhone 8 even copied that design somewhat. So you can see Apple is not being very adventurous with their their housings, trying to switch it up all the time. They're trying to go with the safe and secure route, easy to manufacture and cheaper to produce. The iPhone 11 very likely will have the same rounded corners and overall appearance aside from the rear triple lens camera on the back as the iPhone XS and 10. And just to add into this report, Max Weinbach earlier did also say that USB-C will likely be standard on everything in 2020. Not only AirPods, but the iPhone as well. Everything will be synchronized with a USB-C mediator. I love it and I cannot wait for that future. I wish it was 2019, but at least Apple will be giving us the USB-C to lightning cable in the box from what we've heard earlier. Also wanted to mention this, so iFixit did their customary teardown of AirPods 2 and they found some interesting changes I didn't catch. Well, first one I did notice is the hinge design is completely different. They say it is more sturdy, it's a more efficient design. So smaller doesn't necessarily mean worse here. Also they found, and something that I didn't really mention, is that the entire logic board is covered in this weird weird goop, and that's to boost water resistance. So it looks like Apple actually did make strides and changes to make their AirPods more water resistant. Instead of sealing off the case, they sealed off the logic board with this goop. It's kind of sticky, it's like a silicon. A very interesting way, but honestly, I think they should have just reinforced the edges as these were not water resistant in my test. They failed the water resistance test. Oh. Hey, it's actually working, cool. That wasn't glowing earlier. Wow, so I just noticed they have three separate LEDs for all the different colors. Huh, I always thought it was a one. Very cool, very cool, just noticed that. And an interesting study from Business Insider found that most people are skeptical of Apple Pay until there's a physical card option. Once Apple presented that, 80% of people are now willing to try Apple Pay that weren't before just because of that. And I'm definitely excited. All the perks just outdoing the credit card companies, making it simpler, cheaper rates, what's not to like? I like that Apple's doing this. They're branching out to so many different areas. They're basically gonna own the world soon. But hey, I love it. Everything is unified, synced, and you can call it a monopoly almost, but Samsung's free to do the same thing. Apple's the only one actually doing it and in so many veins. And also this, if you have sacrificed your device, not updating to 12.2, you are likely to enjoy the very last jailbreak for a considerable 
considerable amount of time. This is coming from the man himself who develops or helps develop basically these jailbreak exploits, the entire programs. You know, just enjoy this one. Enjoy this jailbreak for what it's gonna be because who knows what the future will bring. Enjoy this moment for what it is. Before even iOS 13 or anything, the jailbreak is right, right here, about to come out. And I'm excited, I'm so excited. All right guys, there it is. Crazy news day, air power dead. I'm honestly very discouraged about that. I hope that that's not a trend that we're gonna start seeing in many Apple products. Over promising and under delivering, or in this case, not delivering at all. iPhone 11 stuff is exciting though. Honestly, if you ask me, I like the lens design. It's something, where, what else can Apple do realistically that looks good but still keeps it looking like an iPhone? This is a good solution and I'm sure it gives Apple a lot of room in there to, to make the sensor sizes larger, maybe even improve the flash. Like expanding the lens itself is not necessarily a bad thing. And um, yeah, anyways guys, the latest on Apple, keep you guys updated in the loop, but we're planning a very, very interesting April Fool's video. Hope you guys like it. Stay tuned. Peace.